We've got sovereignty at the top. We're a small group of people. The assembly movement is the opposite of that. We can have sovereignty for people. Everywhere in the world. And we can start in the UK today. Into small groups. They broke down into small groups. Each of those groups. Each of those groups. Discussed the issues that were close to their hearts. Discussed the issues that were close to their hearts. Each of those groups then elected a spokesperson. Each of those groups then elected a spokesperson. Who then came up to the mic. Who then came up to the mic and spoke. And spoke. That way, that way, everybody's view, everybody's view can, be heard can be heard through consensus. Through consensus. Do people like this suggestion? Do people like this suggestion? I am also here in solidarity with the are um, occupying Chicago. So if you have people in debt and, and you have an economy based on people buying useless tax and increasingly useless tax, people forget about people and we're all in competition with each other as opposed to helping each other. So, so we have this thing which fosters, I want better things than them or I want better fashion than them or I want better cars than them. And to me that the important thing is how can we change that mentality? Two things like this, where we come to consensus and say, actually, what's best for all of us? And I think the fact is that people don't empathise with other people. Yeah. That you don't have middle class people empathising with working class people yeah. and understanding why they might go and riot on the streets. Yeah. Instead, they're saying, you know, why weren't they going to Parliament Square to riot? It's like, if you can't empathise with well, people. I think, I think they're talking a bit too much strategy and a bit too much theory, and I think we need to get into tactics and logistics. Am I allowed to just yeah. say no to a policeman? I mean, I don't know if things like that. These um, people are really good on things like that. Oh, thank you. It's all advice for protests. Thank you. In some ways, may, you know, I think it's important what we occupy, but it, even more important is how we uh, are, uh, what our ethos is, how we respond to what comes towards us that really symbolizes who we are and makes a statement. So now, I want feedback. I suggest we hear from those representatives from the small group. We give each person two to three minutes. I think I'll talk quietly. Yeah. I think the the Demo people have lost faith in the democratic process, and I'm hoping, and I'm I'm one of them. I questioned the, the effect of protest, and and I'm I'm praying that this really has an effect, and that it's an, it's an example to everyone around the world. And that there's, it will renew my faith in the democratic process. Uh, ever since Reagan and Thatcher, success has been uh, treasured more than compassion. And I think that you know society only made as much progress as it did because of compassion, taking care of the weakest and looking after everyone. So I think we need to change the debate and uh, just come back to more of an equal society. Um, I've been following Global Revolution live stream from Occupy Wall Street for the last two weeks. Started watching it right from the first day. So it's been really fascinating to watch all the occupation start up all over the world. Uh, well, there's clearly um, a problem with the banking system. The fractional reserve banking system is obviously corrupt and uh, it's just getting worse and worse. We're on an exponential debt curve, something's got to give. And can't keep just chucking public money at the banks who are paying themselves vast amounts of cash. It just doesn't seem right to me. What have we got? 1,000, 2,000 people. That's pretty good, but I was hoping to fill London, fill um, the banking district with angry people, and they're just, I guess there's not enough here to make me feel that in, in the country cares yet. Uh, it makes me feel happy to see that there's so many people have come. We've only come in a group of four people. 
and uh, just to see out of so many people that I've met today have only come either on their own or with a few people and just together look at us look at the crowd and we're not standing up for looting we're not standing up for violence we're not standing up for overthrowing the government by violent forms we stand for just a change of agenda and for something for ourselves we laid these streets we built these buildings we laid the bricks the people have done all of this and all we want we express that we are unhappy with the way that the power has been put into people's hands, has been abused. Now, obviously, a lot of people might might have a, a view of where we'd ultimately want to get, which is you know beyond capitalism entirely. And you know, I think we can all have worthwhile dreams about that. But the questions we need to ask are, you know, what are the really obvious steps that make things vastly better than they are now that we can articulate to people in ways that hopefully they can understand and get behind. Because what the powers that be know is that most of us actually are against a lot of the stuff that goes on, but they've been able to count on the fact so far that too many of us are not prepared to go and do anything about it. I expected it to be big. What I didn't expect is so many people to be interested in my gun. There were a lot of people asking me questions about it. Uh, I'm here to promote a movement, uh, to promote gold uh, and silver coins as the new currency. It's a movement that started over 20 years ago now and um, what we want is paper money to disappear because paper money is not money, it's just an empty promise. I think in order to get a firm solution we need to be getting economists on board, politicians on board, bankers on board, people who also work within these sectors need to come out and help us as well because it's not it's not just the unemployed, it's not just people struggling to pay their bills. People don't know what alternatives to offer and that's what needs to be worked on. Actual things that can be implemented to start a change from the bottom up instead of constantly taking orders from the top down from a government that actually we didn't elect. Okay, Move Your Money Project is a UK campaign which is similar to the campaign which happened in Holland earlier this year where basically Customers of ING Bank got together and said to the bank that if they don't stop giving bonuses to their employees, high, high end bonuses, that they will withdraw all their money on a certain day. And through that pressure, the banks actually caved, well, the bank caved in and they no longer, or they put a freeze on giving payouts to their top employees. So, what we're aiming to do is a similar thing. And we're going to begin by aiming at Royal Bank of Scotland, a bank that was bailed out by the UK taxpayer. And hopefully by organising lots of the customers of RBS, we will announce a day over the coming months, probably around the end of January, where we aim to get people to go into their bank, either withdraw or transfer their cash into another account. And hopefully by that threat, it will make the banks rethink their position on giving bonuses to their employees. There's a few other organisations out there that we're going to be working with as well. Um, UK Bank Run, Rage Against the Banks, um, they're already doing a similar thing, so they've got quite a lot of support. We've just started out, but we're, hope we're gaining more and more support as we go on. So, so I'm here representing the corporations to observe all these troublemakers who want to change things. And uh, I'm basically here to tell them, you can't regulate us, you cannot change anything. Um, go shopping. Go watch your movies, go watch TV at home, but don't try to change the systems. I mean, all these things about regulating banks, no. We don't want any regulations, no laws. It's gonna stay the way it is. I want more bailout money, that's why I carry my suitcase with me. Quantitative easing, electronic money, it's okay, you know, we will take it. Um, and uh, basically you see the London Stock Exchange behind me. It's private property, but I don't need to call private security. I have the police. You know, you guys can pay with your taxes, but those guys work for me. I'd like to, if I'm protesting something, I would like people to take the protest seriously. And uh, I, you can take a, a tie-dye shirt seriously, but um, uh, a lot of people who, you know, rather than just trying to preach the converted, you want to, you want to show that there's a whole gamut of people. You know, I wear a suit sometimes. I think, to a certain degree, this, these demonstrations aren't for uh, aren't, aren't for the politicians. They're not for the bankers. They're for us. They're for us to know that we're not alone in our concerns. We're not just sitting in our rooms reading the papers and reading the, the news online and thinking, "Shit, you know, there's nothing that we can do." I believe in the power of um, civil unrest. I guess um, 
think it's important that people stand up for themselves and teach others to stand up for themselves and try to change things that just aren't right. I'm here in solidarity with the 300 or 651 occupations and it's 951 occupations around the world and I believe if we all, if every country does this and every major city and every country does this then hopefully someone will stand up and listen. I think like I personally hoped it was going to be like somewhere which was more disruptive or more like at least symbolically relevant than St Paul's but we couldn't get into the London Stock Exchange. I also think it's important we can show people how you can live democratically and we can set an example of living in a way where everyone contributes and everyone gets involved and everyone makes food and everyone cleans and everyone picks up after themselves. It started off a bit rubbish and not everyone can hear but as we get going I can see that everyone's beginning to hear, everyone's getting involved people are feeling more comfortable with the human microphone, people are understanding consensus decision making. I think it is reaching out to new people because just on the way down I was cycling through and there were these like American tourists and they were like reading people's podcasts and they were like yeah this system is shit and yeah it doesn't work and I think unless you see things like you know placards people demonstrating and people you know openly talking about these things then the average person just internalizes what they think a lot of the time and they won't actually act on it so it's a good way to spark the debate and discussion so instead of being like i don't know dividing ourselves over our different conceptions of how things should be and our like technical things to do with like the place where we're not really there yet we've got like people united about the fact that it should be different and that means that we can open it up to people Actually, I was just uh, walking around, you know, just visiting London. So, saw a bunch of guys, you know, asking for their rights. So, I think it's beautiful because I wish things like that happened to my country. I'm from Romania. And, you know, those bastards of politicians doing nothing, you know, just ripping on everybody, man. It's amazing to see so many people, like, whether they know it or not, it's amazing to see so many people taking part in direct action. Um, there was the big march in, in March um, this year, but, and you had tons of people coming out to that, like from all kinds of backgrounds that you wouldn't necessarily expect to be out protesting. But that was just made to be March. This is, an, this is taking back a space for the people themselves and using it as like a space to organize like for the future, to like send things off from here, and to like get more people involved. But like the, the fact that people are occupying a space and I, there are families around, the people you wouldn't necessarily expect to see on in demonstrations and things like that. But the fact that they're all coming together is just it's really amazing. So Henry David Thoreau, he went to prison for tax evasion. And um, he wrote a book in prison called Civil Disobedience, and where he argued that if one in ten men obey their moral responsibility to not support a state which uh, engaged in slavery, then either the state would collapse under the weight of uh, people incarcerated, or it would change its policy on slavery. And what actually happened was the policy on slavery changed. So I think, uh, basically, it's an obligation to... I mean, if you're actually paying for atrocities and stupidity, then um, I think on some, some level it's your obligation to do something about it. I think there's a lot of hope in the air. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of intelligence here. And uh, if you get enough intelligent people together talking and thinking and building, perhaps something fantastic can come out of that. It's like, yeah, I was chatting to my friend the other day, and we came up with this idea, right? It's like, you walk into a field, yeah, and the field's full of litter, and then everyone's dropping litter on the floor, and you're like, why are you dropping litter on the floor? And it's like, everyone else does it. But it's like, that's not the point. The point is, you're not going to drop litter. If I was sitting at home, I'd just be like, man, why aren't I fucking in London? I talk about this shit all the time. That's how I feel. <laughs> Pure and simple, like, so if you read the poems, you'll understand why I'm here, really. You know what I mean? Cool. I can spit you a poem if you want to. Yeah, no, go on, really, really quick. Quick one, yeah. Disintegrate the grain that shoots from the sowed seed of these financially acclaimed. The stricken hail their names, they are the saviours paid, but they hold the deadly blade that slices heels of citizens born tame. These holographic humans breed carbon in the air. Oh, fucked it. Holographic humans breed poison in the air to sell the carbon flower and profit from this grown despair. A panic cultivated from the depth, a pandemic fad that's bred to spread, it will devour our earth. A greedy race, a logic lost, we are the rain that becomes the frost.
It's a bit of a depressing one. I think it started off very well. The General Assembly people are coming out with very good ideas. I think providing we can stay focused, not lose track of why we're here and what we're doing, not let any egos take over and remain as one equal unit uh, and uh, have solidarity with the many other occupations which are happening today all over the world. I think uh, I think this can be very promising. Yeah, definitely. I think every single person makes a difference. If, if, any, if anyone's sitting at home saying, thinking, oh, I wish I was there, I think, oh, I won't make a difference. Yeah, if you ain't part of the solution, you're part of the cause. <laughs> the other way around. <laughs> if you ain't part of the problem. Um, I fucked that up so bad. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, every single person does make a difference. If everyone said, I won't make a difference, no one would be here. Like, if there's a really good idea, but then people are too worried about, oh, we might get arrested, we might get in a little bit of trouble, it's like, you're not really, like, down for the cause, you're not really, like, like, putting your all in. The 1% is going to see that the 99 a lot, you know, and more they are all over the world, so probably yeah. they're going to be, start to be scared about this, you know. And actually, I think that the 1% would change if the 99 were out there literally, like, taking part. So this is the first day a revolution starts quite slowly. It's like a snowball effect. These kind of things raise visibility and awareness. Um, hopefully it's going to make it into news. Um, and from there, from that awareness, people then could start sort of to take stock and try and counteract the sort of level of denial that people inevitably build because it's scary. It's really scary what's, what's happening. All we ever hear about is a, a, an economic deficit when the thing that we should be talking about is our environmental deficit. We're told that we need to start growing again when we're on a finite planet and we can't have infinite growth. I have to be here. Otherwise, I can't moan and I can't read the newspaper and you know, huff and uh, what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do about it. This is where it starts. I mean, everyone should come out if they if they feel anything about it. You know, it's not. I think everyone's united here because it's not about left right. It's about right and wrong. And there's obviously a lot of wrongs being done. I think we're going to be here for a long time, just like uh, Occupy Wall Street is. It makes me feel, I mean, hopeful, I think. It's really cheesy. Yeah, hopeful. So we were in Starbucks, and uh, all of a sudden it's like the rush of people and police back over to the glass doors, so it's all glass. So we all rushed to the front. It's locked, of course. They locked the rush of people. And um, yeah, some some guy was uh, starting to argue with police about something, but it wasn't. It was not, never, so, nothing got physical. Yeah. We're just arguing. And then I missed it when it kicked off, so I really don't know how it exactly happened. But we were all watching. Grabbed him out. Yeah, grabbed him and threw him down and had his arm back behind his, you know, back. And, it was, it was clearly pain. not moving or resisting, really, and they were just using unnecessary force. I haven't actually seen any police brutality so far, so I'm not actually really riled up. It's just like sort of a, a, a reflex response to shout, shame, shame, scum, scum, because I haven't seen any. When I see some, I might start hurling things. I might get my mask on, change my top, start lamping some coppers. Should be wearing this, really. Yeah, that's a bit on. late. But, uh, <laughs> You can save that again, and I'll just edit out for a bit before. But yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'm all right at the moment. Uh, I came from Birmingham this morning, like, really early, and uh, yeah, um, I've enjoyed the game, and it's been really positive. There's been a lot of uh, a lot of good outcomes from it so far, and obviously we've had this little incident now, which has kind of put a bit of a damper on it. But um, other than that, I think it's been a productive day all around. And, yeah, I'm just happy that it's it's gone so well worldwide. I mean, it's, it's spread like wildfire, really, hasn't it? I think this is something that had to happen in London. Um, and there's, um, there's a clear feeling here that it is just one of, one of many occupations taking part over the world. Um, they don't drag as many people out as a, as a, like a, a protest because they're kind of, it, it's more of a, you're staying there, it's kind of, it only drags out people who can stay there, you know, and that's always a problem. Um, 
but hopefully that's something yeah and that, that's the kind of people that are here the kind of people that can't stay the kind of people that maybe don't have jobs they've got to go to every day and that's always a problem but that's why this isn't on its own that's why you have to follow up with the, the student march on the 9th and the strikes on the 30th like that's why we can't see this is going to change the world we have to see it as a, as a part of a bigger thing well we, we're trying to get trying to organize it but now it's a problem that if you leave you're not guaranteed that you can come back in because of the police presence so we're trying to work that out but we'd like to stay yeah we'd like to stay as long as we can definitely definitely I guess I'm here as a part of uh, an information spreading movement. I don't believe in saying, rather than, I don't, rather than saying how people should be or what they should fight against, because people react and not understand and maybe throw away their opinion later, or they will react to you telling them. Uh, I'm here to spread the idea of analysis. You, know, you should analy analyze the world around you, not ignore it. Find information, spread, research, uh, and to do that uh, together. I don't believe that protest often works. Uh, but in this in this case, maybe it does as an information awareness, not as changing the world or changing anything. It's more about that pre uh, prerequisite first, and that's that's why I'm here. I'll be honest, I don't really do a lot of protesting because I often feel that it can get quite dogmatic and like. I don't know, I'm, I'm quite a believer of both sides of the story, but when I heard about what they were doing here, I just felt like, yes, definitely. I mean, the situation that we're seeing right now, where basically the government seemed to have kind of decided independently of the people who they're essentially supposed to be governing and working for and with, they've decided that actually, okay, so they're going to privatise the NHS and that the bankers really, that, that, like the most recent thing I suppose that's been really upsetting me is the idea that people who are on benefits are scroungers of some kind where the statistics show that the actual amount of people who are scrounging and don't deserve their benefits are incredibly low compared to the amount of people who are very rich and don't pay their taxes properly and that I find really quite upsetting and I do think that even if this doesn't really change something, it's actually very important for us to just be here and to show that we disagree with the fact that that the money has just been incredibly mismanaged to the point that people are losing jobs and pensions are in trouble, benefits are in trouble, and the government is saying that they need to make cuts and because they have no money and everyone's just kind of agreeing with that and going like, oh, okay, we have no money, we need austerity. But there's loads of money, it's just in the wrong places. There was a, there was a logistics group on Monday that started talking about it, but it's one of those things where it's like, you don't even, we didn't know whether we were going to be in the square, we didn't know whether we were going to yeah. be out here. It doesn't so make that It all much. just had to happen spontaneously. Honestly, it, it wouldn't make that much of a difference. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a bit smaller than that. At least the yeah. Metropolitan Police sorted out the toilets. Yeah, much. true. So what are we cooking? What are we cooking? <laughs> what people? Everything that people have given me so far. Um, I think it's homegrown carrot potatoes. Um, I'm just putting some tomato butter bean uh, soup in there. Uh, just about to put a few spices in. If anybody's listening, give me cooking oil. I need cooking oil. <laughs> but uh, just trying to cook some hot food for people so that they, you know, that they're looked after over the night. So a lot of people have come down with the right idea of protest, but. Unfortunately, in our very convenient modern Western society, very few people realise about their own uh, welfare and realise they have to look after themselves. I feel that I feel quite unsatisfied with our process of democracy in our country, and I'm quite interested to see what happens when a group of people get together, an enormous group of people get together, and try and reclaim that sense of democracy and reclaim that social sense that we are a community. I don't know. It's amazing and wonderfully encouraging. And it means revolution has started, and um, and we're going to win it. We're going to take. We're going to reclaim this beautiful planet and look after it. Overthrow the dictatorship, the dictatorship of the rich that's been ruining everything for so long. It, things won't have an impact in this country until the shit hits the fan. You know, until people are banging on the door of the Corp Bank or Barclays and not getting any money out. So that hasn't happened yet. So. A lot of people, you know, they, they don't even know that the world has changed, that we don't have a capitalist system. It's, it's a car crash. It's, it's already collapsed. It's just taken a while for the bits to fly around. But I mean, um, yes, I, I, I think this is having a huge impact because it's like, this is like the brain of the movement assembling itself. Everybody here is like one of the cells of this massive global brain that's sort of integrating and thinking about what to do next. 
and you're part of it. You're one bit of that brain, and so are the people watching. <laughs>